Hi, this is the review for our shoestring workshop. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be modifying our CSS and what I should probably say is modifying our SAS so that our uh, page, which is here, which basically is um, here we're looking at the styling that we have up to this point, which is really not what we're going to be looking for. We're going to be able, we're going to be creating a grid layout and a number of other things. And in essence, we're going to modify how this feels by creating our own uh, CSS as opposed to using something like the Bootstrap library. We're going to recreate a version of the Bootstrap library. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of uh, low-hanging fruit uh, at this point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a couple of styles here. I don't actually need this. Let me get rid of this for the moment. So we've got this uh, container class. And one of the things that would be nice is if this container class, which is used a number of different places, so you can see within our home template is one of the places we've got this container. Um, and it would be nice if this was at least centered on the page. So we'll start up with that and then we'll end up uh, fixing our navigation. So it's just a quick um, win that we could get here is by specifying that if we have a container, what we're going to do is we're going to specify that we've got a margin. And we're not really concerned about the margin uh, on the top or on the bottom, but we're gonna wanna give a little bit of a margin on the left and right of, and we'll just say that this is gonna be 5%. So by default, a div is a block element, takes up 100% of the screen. By just making this change here, we can at least start to center some of this content over here, or at, at a bare minimum to have a, uh, whether or not it's centered or not, at least have margin so that we're not uh, going out and hitting the edges at this point. So once we end up doing this, we're gonna actually start with probably one of the trickier parts. There's two things we're gonna focus on. We're gonna focus on implementing the classes for our nav bar, um, and while we do, we'll get an idea of how SAS works and what the advantages are uh, of SAS. And again, we've got our uh, we've got a, a SAS pipeline set up in the sense that our files, our uh, SAS files, are going to be converted to our uh, CSS files. So you can see that there's a correspondence here with. Uh, with normalize and shoestring. Um, and so what we're gonna do is, the next part we're gonna uh, do is we're gonna focus on the nav bar and getting this to look, uh, having this nav bar fixed to the top, uh, having uh, sort of a brand div uh, uh, link on the left and this other link on the right. And I'm gonna actually make it a little bit more interesting. We'll put a couple of links here, which is probably a little bit um, uh, behavior that you would expect in a in a real application. So that's the next thing that we'll end up tackling. So in order to do the nav, the first thing we're going to do is actually import a style sheet here that doesn't exist yet. And this will be nav. Now if I was to go and just rerun this, I would end up getting an error message here that can't find this style sheet. But if I was to go back here, and modify this and add this file, this message should end up going away, right? I don't have anything in here at this point, but we can actually start creating the style. So if we look at this uh, page over here, this is actually in our layout, we could look and we could see that we've got this nav tag We've got a couple of different um, classes that are here, uh, and these classes are going to determine how our nav bar ends up showing up. So we've got this um, uh, nav, we've got a nav bar, we've got a nav bar inverse, we've got a nav bar fixed top. So the nav bar is going to give us a style. The nav bar inverse is going to 
uh, modify that style to invert some of the colors, and the nav, nav bar fixed top is going to end up fixing it to the top of the page. And that's what we'll start out with. So if we were to go over to our nav page here, uh, what we could do here is we could specify nav. Now, one of the things that the uh, that we have the ability to do here is to do some nesting and to say, hey, not only are you a, a nav tag, but in fact, if you also have the nav bar class, we could go over here and we could say, just to get started here, we could say background color, and let's say that we were gonna make this something like some kind of gray here. If we went to reload this, we should be able to see this going gray. So let's make this a little bit more obvious. So if I end up specifying the background color to be red, you can see that this shows up red. Obviously this is not what we want to do. Uh, we're going to have, want to have this as a gray color. So let's go up here and we'll actually create some variables here, which will come in pretty useful. So the way they end up creating a variable with, with um, SAS is I'm going to say nav background, and I'm going to give this a value of CCC. And I'll go over here, and we'll say that we're going to use this nav background. And this will end up reloading. So we've got this here. There's still a bunch of work that we're going to want to do on this. Um, let's specify a, a few different things here. Um, so one of the things that we could end up doing is within our nav bar, we could take a look at our links. So now this is, again, a little, little bit different, right, to just kind of get used to the terminology. Um, if we end up just putting a tag here, what this says is that uh, you're going to be matched if, in fact, you are a link within the nav bar. And if you're a link within the nav bar, we'll say color, and I'm going to set up a color for my nav link, which is going to be, this is going to be 777. So this is what your color is going to be, and we'll put another couple of things on here. We'll say text decoration is none, and just sort of see these changes. Okay, Let's just do one other thing here. So when we end up mousing over this, we end up hovering. So we're going to use a, uh, a pseudo selector here to specify that if, in fact, uh, you are a link under the nav and also you're being hovered over, we're going to specify a color and this is going to be nav link hover and we'll make this 333. Three, three. So this should end up giving us something where this gets a little bit darker as you end up uh, mousing over it. So one of the things that we could do is that we have the ability to uh, actually handle this a little bit differently because we want this to be inverted in the sense that we want this to be dark and we want this to be light. So the way that this is done with Bootstrap, and we're going to end up doing the same thing here, is that we could specify that we have within this nav bar, if in fact you are within this nav and you are a nav bar inverse, which is what this is, what we're going to do here is we're going to specify that your background color and what we're going to do, one of the things you could do with SAS is actually invert a color. So I think this gives you the complementary color. And this is just a quick win here. Because if we do this, 
Then we get this dark nav bar, which is what we're going to be looking for. Now, this doesn't look too good, so we're going to end up inverting the link colors as well. So the same way that we have our links over here for nav, again, this would give us the ability to either set something as a nav or, um, uh, or as a, a nav bar inverse. And we'll go over here and specify that if you are a link within this nav bar inverse, then our color, and we're going to invert our nav link. And if you're hovering, right, we're going to use our pseudo selector, and we'll specify that your color, and we're going to invert our nav link hover. So we've got two styles. We've got our uh, regular uh, nav, and we've got our nav bar inverse. And this gives us something that looks a little bit, a little bit better here. Well, let's do deal with a couple of other things here. You see, we've got this margin that's on the top here. Our nav bar is not going all the way up to the top of our page. There's another style that we have here, which is that we, we're having our HTML here that we've got a nav bar fixed top. So if we end up looking under our views and under our layout, we could see that we've got nav bar fixed tops. Let's actually implement this style here and let's get rid of a little space here so we could see where we are. All of this stuff is within our nav and we'll specify if in fact you're also a nav bar fixed top, then what we want to do is we want to position you. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say your position is going to be fixed and your top is going to be zero. There's something interesting that's going to happen when we do that. This will end up getting positioned here, but we, lose, we end up losing our widths. So that's something that we need to fix. We actually want to be able to set our width and actually set our height as well to be around 40 pixels. That's what the, um, what the workshop has uh, specified, or at least that's what the um, wireframe looks like for the workshop. So we could say that if you are in fact a nav bar here, we want to make your width to be 100%, and we'll make our height 40 pixels. In which case, if we go back here, we're starting to look a little bit better. Again, this is not set up exactly the way that we want, and, and also just to make things a little bit more realistic. Usually, if you do have some sort of other links here, you're usually going to have more than one. So just to make this a little bit more meaningful here, let's actually set up. So we'll have a contact and maybe about, and we'll have a link, and this is going to be about us. So we've got these two other links that are here, and we're going to want to uh, set these up so that they end up uh, making a bit more sense here. So one of the things that we have with these links, if we look over at our CSS here, or excuse me, if we end up looking at our um, HTML, we see that we've got a nav bar which is going to be going to the right. So what we're simply going to do here is specify that in our nav CSS here, we're going to specify that we've got another class which is going to be nav bar right. Now, this is underneath our nav bar, so we don't end up using um, our uh, end symbol here. We're going to say nav bar right. So we don't end up putting the uh, ampersand here because this is actually one level below it. So if you have the, if you're below nav and your class is nav bar right, nav bar right we're going to end up floating you 
to the right. In which case, we end up getting something like this, which is not exactly what we want. But let's look at this a little bit. So right now, the, the default behavior of a unordered list is to have these list items with these bullet points. So there's a couple of things that we want to be able to do here. We'd like to be able to specify that if you're underneath the nav, which this guy is here, and we'll specify that if you're a unordered list, let's make this a little bit bigger. So if you're an unordered list, and in fact, you also have a class of nav, let's do this a little bit at a time. We'll say list style type is gonna be none. So this should end up getting rid of the dots, which is good. Let's also specify that um, there's, there's margin and padding that ends up going with the unordered list. We want to be able to get rid of it. So I'm just going to say margin. Uh, I'm going to say zero. And I'll say padding of zero. Let's just see what this does. Because there's a lot of, you could actually even see this if you ended up looking with your developer tools at this point, and you ended up selecting your unordered list. So this becomes pretty handy when you're doing this layout, but if you did this, you could actually take a look and see, in fact, that you're gonna have a bit of padding here. So here's our We go up here and we select this again. And here's our unordered list. We should be able to see with our style here That we've got quite well you can actually see the padding here right you could see your margin and see your padding so if we end up reloading this right at least we're shifting up here a little bit not exactly where we want to be but and I think the thing that I'm just actually looking for here was computed so again if by getting rid of the margin and the padding right we're getting a little bit closer and what I want to be able to uh, do here is that by default, these list items are really just one on top of the other. But I'm going to specify that if you are a list item under this unordered list with a class of nav, I'm going to say let's float left take a look and see what that does and you can see now these things are pretty much on top of each other but I'm gonna go over here and I will say uh, I'm gonna set a margin right of 10 pixels to give myself a little bit of room between these guys so we're getting a little bit closer here um, we're gonna modif want to modify this so that this ends up ends up getting centered but we definitely are getting a little bit closer. So it's kind of difficult to actually center something, center text vertically. And you could actually look, there's a number of different ways that you could end up doing it. One of the ways to do it is if you have the, if you really just have one uh, line somewhere, you could actually specify a line height. And what we end up, what we have here is we have this uh, other, under the layout, where we're going to be looking, we've got this nav bar header and we've got this nav bar brand within it. So one of the things that we could do here is that we could see first of all that we are, you know, um, we could set this up so that we could give this a class. So we've got our uh, nav bar header and I could put this inside my nav class 
So right in here, wherever you want to put this, let's put it right above our UL. So we could specify if you are, again, this is a level below our nav or inside of our nav somewhere, but I could specify that this is going to be, I'm going to give this a line height of 40 pixels. And we can also specify, let's just take a look and see what this looks like. This will actually center this for us. Notice that we've sort of lost this over here on the right. So let's actually go back and fix that as well. So what we could do is also, we have that unordered list that's on the right, and we could go over here and specify that if we give this a, a line height, Again, only works if the text is going to be on one line, but if we give a line height the same as the um, height of our container, that will be in a position where we would like to get these to line up uh, properly. So let's fix that. So what's actually happening here is that we've got our uh, navbar header and if we look at this, we see that it's going all the way over to the right. It's actually pushing this down. So one of the things that we also want to do here is we want to specify that our navbar header is going to be floating. And we want to end up floating it to the left. Right, so we've got our navbar right that is floating right and our navbar header is going to float left. When we do this, we should get these to now line up within here, which is looking pretty good for our nav. So that actually works out, will work out pretty well. Um, the next thing that we'll end up doing is we're going to take a look at how we can actually create a uh, column uh, layout. Um, and the other thing we'll also do is we're going to make our uh, images uh, responsive. So we'll actually be focusing on the, if you look at our home, we've got a, number, we've got a row here, and this is going to be broken down into uh, 12 columns. So the fact that we've got four, four, and four, this is going to turn out to be uh, going to end up taking up 33% of our screen. And that's the next thing we'll take a look at. So we see that we've got a number of images here that are set up to be responsive. So we can actually put this right in our main file here, which is to specify that if, in fact, your responsive image, we're going to give you a width of whatever your container is. And if we do that, go back here, we'll see that these end up going to the full screen. Again, we're going to come in and, and, and do our grid layout, which is the next thing that we'll take a look at. And again, it's kind of nice if we could actually uh, go over here and specify a grid. And we'll go over here. So in order to go and specify that, the CSS for this grid, what we would like to be able to do is to uh, specify that we're going to have these rows and we're going to end up having these columns. So just as a quick way of getting some results here. We'll specify that if you are a row, we're going to end up clearing any floats. And we'll also uh, specify that if you are a column, and in our case I think it's large 4, and we'll eventually make this dynamic. But if you're a column large 4, 
we're going to say your width is going to be 33%. Just to sort of get this started here, in which case we're going to have our percentages right for these three columns. But the other thing that we also want to be able to do, we want to be able to float them. So here we run into a couple of issues here. One of them being is that, and we saw this before, that if, we're, if we end up floating uh, above this, um, if we end up floating, what ends up happening is whatever is below it ends up sort of creeping underneath it. And that's why you're seeing the gray, which is actually below it, but since these things are floating, Right, they end up floating on top of it. Now, there's a couple of different things that we could end up doing here. I'm gonna uh, go in here and hard code a solution, and then I'm gonna go in and modify it and change it with a style. So if I went over here to my home, and we've got these um, divs here, one of the things that I could do is that if I ended up going, you know, here's my uh, container over here, I could go over here and put a let's say a br tag clear if I do that what I'm looking to do is to sort of get this to go away here so I realized I actually had this in the wrong spot. So I mean, let me take this out and I'll put it back. So without this, I'm putting this below my container where I've got my three columns. And I'm going to get rid of it. And you'll see that I'm gonna have my problem again where this um, float is floating on top of these other elements. And if I put this back in, this ends up going away. But it would be a drag really to have to do this every time that we ended up having a container. So we're gonna actually do this with a, uh, a pseudo uh, selector, which is going to be, we're gonna be able to specify that if you are a container, that for every time that we have a container, we're going to actually insert after. And so you have this, this idea that there is a, basically a space after the container. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill it up with some empty content. We're going to specify that the display is going to be block. And we're going to specify that we're going to clear both. And if we end up doing that, then this looks quite a bit better. Now, we're probably also going to want to make some other uh, modifications here uh, as well. So one of the things that we probably would like to do is these are sort of bleeding right in to each other over here. And so if we went over here and we specified that we wanted to um, add a little padding here. And again, at some point we'll end up modifying this and we'll end up making it dynamic. But if we went over here and we said, hey, look, we're gonna have a little padding here, 10 pixels, to give us a little bit of room between here. When we do that, we run into a problem. And the problem that we end up running into is that when we end up looking at the width of our um, columns, it's not taking into account the padding. And so what we're going to do here is that we're going to specify for, and we'll put this underneath our main file, that what we want to do is say, hey, look, when you end up looking at the uh, width of a uh, 
column, if we set the width of the column, that's going to include the padding as well. So really what happens is that that 33% becomes greater than 33% because the padding wasn't, wasn't included. Um, and as a result, it goes over to the next line. We actually get greater than 100%. So instead, what we can do is that we could specify that we're going to be using, and we could do this for all the elements, and say that the default is box sizing is going to be border box. And if we do that, we should get these guys to now line up, and they'll look a little bit better, and we'll have our padding in here as well, which is what we were actually uh, going for. So this is going to take care of just this one scenario, but we've got a bunch of other scenarios that we're going to want to deal with here. Uh, for instance, if we ended up looking at our HTML, we would see that this would be uh, supposed to be six columns. This is supposed to be six columns on the right. And again, we could go in here and we could do this grid and do this for, you know, loop from uh, 1 to 12 to get these uh, values or... Uh, and, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to end up using uh, SAS to do some looping uh, in order to dynamically generate uh, these styles. So we're going to want to have column LG1 all the way up to column LG12. And the way that we're going to end up getting that is that we're going to do a for loop and we'll say for and we're going to use this, the SAS variable of i from 1 to 12. And for each of these, we're going to loop. And we're going to end up replacing this by saying that this is going to be, and we'll say pound, I. We're going to want to use this uh, I value. Again, this ends up uh, turning out to be really a template. We're re replacing, we'll get column large uh, 1, column large 2, and so on and so forth. And we're going to want to make this dynamic. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to specify that we're going to take this value of I, right? We're not treating it as a string here. We're actually treating it as a number. We're going to divide it by 12, and we're going to multiply it by 100. And if we go and do that, we'll see that a lot of these other things will end up falling into place. So in our case here, we've got this column 6. And if you wanted to see how your CSS was getting generated, right, you could always end up opening it up, opening it up here. So we've got our shoestring uh, CSS. If we click on this, we could say open link in a new tab. And we could scroll down and find all of our classes here. So we've got you know, this large, and we could see where we're at 50%. Um, right? We're floating left, and we have our padding. So that's going to sort of start us off with our with our grid. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to talk a little bit about how we can make this more responsive. So if we look at this, we can see that a good example would be taking a look at these three columns. Right? As we get smaller, right, this really doesn't look too good. So what we're going to want to do is to specify you know, as you end up uh, getting smaller, we're going to want to modify this where, you know, we might want these just to appear on one line after the other. In other words, we, we almost want to be able to sort of turn off um, our columns based upon uh, what the width of the um, browser is. So we're going to end up doing this with media queries, and that's the uh, next thing that we'll end up taking a look at. So a quick way to get this result, in this case, would be to specify that we're going to do a media query for this, and we only want to show it 
when our width is going to be, let's say, we're dealing with a pretty large screen here, maybe a desktop, and we could set up our media query so that this will only come into play with a bigger screen. So if we would go and look at this, and I could actually get this to show up if I make this bigger. So here I'm about, you know, 1300, but as I end up going down below 1200, right, that goes away and that looks a lot better than what we ended up having before. Now, we can actually make the case of, of specifying, well, you know, as we get smaller, maybe, you know, I don't want to necessarily go down to um, having these on one line, but as I get to be a little bit smaller, um, and let's actually see if we could actually set this up so that um, if my CSS looked like this, um, let's specify that if we have a large screen, um, let's say we want these to show up in four columns. I'm going to actually copy and paste something here. So I'm going to make this three. I'm going to make this three. I'm going to make this three. And I'll specify that I'm going to have one more of these. So now each of these, on a large screen, this should be, this should take up a quarter of the total width that I have here. So if I look at this, that's a quarter as I go down here, I'm back to this, but let's say if I said, hey, you know what, when I get a little bit smaller, okay, but not too small, maybe above a thousand, um, maybe I want this to be, um, I want it to take up uh, six columns. So what we could do here is say, look, you know, if you're sort of a middle range here, right, so you're less than 1,200, but you're greater than, you know, let's say 1,000, and I could say column medium six. So you're not really a desktop, a little bit less than that. I can do this now. Right now, these styles don't exist. Um, but what I can do in order to uh, get them to exist is that I could specify that um, if, in fact, you have a uh, minimum width of a thousand, then we'll go over here and we're going to add doing a little copying and pasting here. So I'm going to go back to my grid here and I'm going to loop here and say if you have a minimum width of a thousand then we're going to call this medium. So again, it's also which class ends up winning, right? It's going to be the last class that ends up winning. So again, if the screen is big, right, I'm greater than 1,200, both of these things are going to be in here, but the large is going to be the last one in, so that width is going to end up winning. So on the large screen, this should end up being 4. But as I get down and I go down below 1,200, now I see that I'm here. If I end up going down below 1,000, then I'm down here. So really what you're able to do is you're able to make your, by using boots, this, this, uh, these media queries, you're able to control the site and make it uh, responsive, which is pretty helpful. And just to, even though we're not using it, but one thing that we might want to do is also specify, you know, small, And this could be here all the time, so we could say, really at any width, this is gonna be small, right? And this sort of goes a, a little bit of a ways in terms of you know, allowing us to have our uh, column layout, but modify the columns based upon the uh, width of the, of the browser window.
So we looked at uh, minimum width. Let's actually just take a look at, at an example of maximum width. So let's say that if our, if our um, browser window was small enough, like someone's looking at this on a mobile device, you can see here things are a little bit strange because we've got our, um, you know, these links that are on the right and they are almost overshadowing the link for our, um, for our text, our shoestring project link. Let's say we wanted to make those navigation links on the right disappear uh, based upon the screen size. And instead of doing a minimum width, what we can do here is that I'm going to go and put this over here in our main page. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify with our media query, we'll say, hey, look, anywhere between zero and let's say 480 pixels, we're going to put a style here. And we'll say that if you are the class of nav, we're going to set the display to none. And again, we probably want to provide some alternative to that. But again, if the goal is to make this disappear on smaller screens, we can do this and we get smaller, we'll see that that disappears. And again, maybe we want to provide some other navigation or modify what that class is, maybe make it smaller. But odds are we would probably want to do something a little bit different than having those links. Maybe we'd end up having a drop down or that sort of thing. So again, this just sort of rounds things out where you could see that not only can you specify a minimum width, right, but you could specify a maximum width as well. And this is, again, a way of just saying, hey, look, we only want this to end up working for these small screens that are, um, you know, from zero to 480 pixels. So the last thing that I want to do is just to dry this out a little bit and also just to introduce the idea of a mix-in which is a way of basically creating a function uh, with, our, with our SAS. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to specify a mixins.scss. And within this mixins, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much copy and paste this code that we have here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify that I'm going to be creating a mix-in, which again is like a function. And I'm going to specify that this is going to make columns. And I'm going to pass in a variable for the type. And so I'm going to put all this code in one place. Instead of actually just creating these columns, I'm also going to go in here and specify the type as well. Again, you could think of this as a, as a template where I'm replacing the string that ends up getting passed in here. And what this is going to allow me to do is that first of all, when I go to my choose string here, I'm going to specify, since I'm going to be using this in my grid, I'm going to make sure I will have this above my grid, but just to be on the safe side here, let's do an import and I'm going to import my mixins. And when I end up going into my grid, I'm going to dry this thing out. And the way that I'm going to do that is instead of putting all this in here, in order to call the mixin, I call it as an include. And I'm going to say I'm going to include make columns, and this is going to be small. And this is going to be make columns. This is going to be medium. And this is going to be large. So if I do that, one thing we should be able to see is so if I have my style sheet here. This should end up giving us our results. Here's our small, here's our medium. 
and here's our large. Again, this is just an idea of being able to create a, a mix-in, which is defined uh, over here by specifying it's a mix-in. Here's the name of it. Here's the parameter that we're going to end up passing into it. This is what it's going to do. And we end up including it here to just dry these things out. And so if we reload this, this should end up working the same way it did before. We go from four to two, down to one. We could see on the top, our nav ends up going away. So this is gonna wrap things up for uh, this workshop. Um, and that's uh, really about it. So we, we went from this, we basically have duplicated some of the functionality that you'll end up seeing and hopefully understand that the, you know, using a third party library like Bootstrap is not magic, right? We ended up accomplishing a lot of this without really a ton of uh, new CSS.